This week on Hermitcraft. Monarchy seems to be working out pretty well for the Hermitcraft server. Is he taking ownership of random builds now? Ren, you can't take my money. Remove king claim. Freedom! Freedom. <laughs> Welcome to the Hermitcraft recap. My name is Pixel Riffs, our writer is Loy XP. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. And last week we began the recap saying we thought King Ren's dynasty on the Hermitcraft server was doing pretty well, only for him to immediately release a video titled The King is Broke. So we apologize for both being late to the party and also jinxing it, I guess. This week brings the first royal decree, the first separatist micro-state, and the first rumblings of a revolution. So before we hear the people sing, let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Starting with King Ren, who is understandably a little miffed that someone has set up priority quests in his absence. Whichever hooligan has decided to come and vandalize the royal statue of awesomeness. Outrageous! He still delivers a report on the server quests, although we don't know for sure if he's counting the phony tokens in the scores or not. Either way, Azuma's ahead of the competition, with XB close behind. But Ren hasn't been idle, he's been digging out a vault in the castle. A dark, echoey and ominous vault, which is mostly dark and echoey because it doesn't have anything in it yet. Yes, the king has given away most of his diamonds to quest doers without really considering how to get any of those diamonds back, especially since all the royal tribute is in the form of rare mob heads and horse armor. Oh, and by the way, that's the new sun drop that sits in the middle of the throne room. We're literally going to be dropping hermits down into the vault, but I've got plans for the central pillar. So after farming some of his own head, the crown lays claim to all the shops and a good deal of the server infrastructure, and sets up a message board laying down the law. And we mean that in the singular. There is only one law. Nobody else can make quests. He even adopts the priority quest scheme for himself, since that seemed to be going pretty well already. This is mine, 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 and mine. It's more like property of the clown, am I right? Uh <laughs> oh, you and me are having words, Ren. Ren, you can't take my money. You and me are gonna have words. It's okay if you do it to other people, but not to me. Ding, he's just going around and claiming all of the shops, apparently. Although maybe he's been a bit too hasty with the lawmaking and should have included an asterisk for the quest to make a quest that he has in the royal task pile. This aligns nicely with the ore vein store Cubvan135 has been running, selling not just coordinates to metal mother loads but also a small adventure in each package. This time Cub has decorated a path to a copper mine with a parkour course that you can cheese if you pay enough attention and figure out how to assemble a water bucket out of the items found nearby. You are, however, not supposed to then ignore the hints and try to turn the whole parkour course into obsidian, which is what Azumavoid tries, and it earns him the whole sand ceiling collapsing on him. If it's detected that this block has changed, uh, that will then trigger the sand collapse from above. You definitely would not want to be buried alive in sand. Um, or maybe you do. I don't know. I don't, I'm not the one to judge, but... Let's waterlog this thing. And I think Cub might have overlooked this next idea, but... I mean... <laughs> Sometimes... <gasps> oh my god, no! It's this redstone ingenuity that earns Cub his own place in the court. When he shows up to B00 for the Dragon Bros fight reward, another quest not made by Rendog, Cub impresses B Dubs by turning a chicken into a pile of netherite ingots. The ancient past comes what? back in the form of netherite! What? Go ahead, take it out. Pretty How? wild. Pretty wild. I can't, I can't even wrap my brain. You know, there's a lot of things in Minecraft I can see it and I can say, oh, that was done by this. Mm -hmm. I have no clue what this is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's magic, man. It's magic. Straight up magic. Straight can up. Can I? This moves B-Dub so much, he declares Cub the court magician right on the spot. And we'd love to explain how Cub did it in the first place, but unfortunately, a true magician never reveals the trick. B-Dubs isn't revealing where he got that dragon head either, but apparently it was a pretty big dragon. Larger than life is kind of B-Dubs' thing this week since he gets started on his main base build behind the Diorite Obelisk. The idea is to construct an ancient temple that's been abandoned and eventually taken over by cyberpunk bandits, who installed neon lights, a big copper wheel, and presumably some nitrous. Which is doing all sorts of little decorative things to give this cyberpunk uh, look. Scar's favorite. 
Magenta Terracotta. But 2 Temple 2 Furious will also feature two farms, so far at least, since B-Dubs has created spots for a sheep shearer and a bamboo auto harvester. And with momentum, I'll break the cart right now. No, oh, I was trying to... Okay, that's fine. Which is far more humane than the auto harvester zombie Cleo shows him. <laughs> so B-Dubs has just come on as I'm blowing myself up because of B-Dubs. See you later! <laughs> Fantastic! And then, and then the, and then the head comes steel out. right there, and boom. Cleo spends quite a bit of time in the blast guillotine, preparing for the armor stand job at the Royal Crassel Stairway. In case you forgot who all is on the Royal Court, the statues on the approach will be a handy guide, but also pretend that Cubvan is also there wearing a pointy hat. Much more complex are the lion statues guarding the supports and giving the passerby a side eye. Still somehow not the most vicious animal Cleo made this week, seeing how her dye shop is a giant Mayan-inspired serpent, vibrant and radiant, rising from the roofed woods by the shopping district, also known as Giant Snake Dude. The, the, the Mayans had a pretty famous kind of snake dude. Um, and I thought, and they're pretty colourful as well, so I'm going to try and remake a giant snake dude. Big Moves also naming it But Did You Die Shop, given that the entry is in the snake's mouth. Cleo might actually kick it quite significantly if iJevin gets his way. Remembering some past squabbles, just saying Season 2 was almost a decade ago, Jevin decides to rekindle the old grudge and installs a roller coaster through the empty side of her base, which starts with an innocent looking minecart and ends in just enough harming potions to kill a guy. Tested this multiple times in creative mode, it will kill her uh, or get her down to like half a heart, like one heart. So just tell her that Jevin made you a roller coaster of like the friendly manner, not the deadly manner. Something to be expected out of a person whose regular tribute to the crown is a wither fought and defeated fair and square. There will be no roller coaster through his empty base though, the interior of his storage complex is already done by the time the outer walls erupt. Outer wall even, since the room is encased in a mountain peak. So to recap, this place was once a smaller mountain, then Jevin removed most of it, then he built a new mountain, then removed some of that to build the room, and now there is a mountain over the room. This is the third time he casually messes with land masses, and something tells us it won't be the last. Uh, are a few little finishing touches that I want to do to it. Now, um, the roof. I wanted to talk about the roof. I, I'm not really sure um, what we would even put up there. There's one landmass you won't be able to mess with from now on. Doc M77 has been keeping his distance from the King's jurisdiction for a while now, but with Ren claiming the server's shops, Doc feels the need to take drastic action. Today, my friends, we form our own nation. I need to, I need to check the date later when this episode comes out. But today is Independence Day. We declare and proclaim the free nation of Perimeter. Declaring the Perimeter its own nation because he says so, he raises a giant flagpole from the bedrock floor to a visible height, maps the boundaries of the Perimeter, and declares independence. His first act as a sovereign nation under his own rule is to go and yell FREEDOM at a very confused Rendog. FREEDOM! Freedom? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think that was successful. Pearlescent Moon doesn't go full separatist, although she at least separates the King's Proclamation message board from her carefully curated nether portal. I don't know, but as far as I'm concerned, this, this is my portal. This isn't Ren's portal. Okay, I'm, I'm moving this over, right? I don't care. I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not following King Ren, I'm just here to get the diamonds out of him. So, I'm moving this board. The move also lets her tidy up the nearby road, by which time she discovers that the cleaning lady business is also claimed as property of the crown. Anyway, I'm going to ignore that sign for now, pretend it never existed. Well, hopefully the king likes trash, because the new mascot Pearl adds to the roof of Twinkly Trash is royally adorable. And depending on your taste, so is the new receptionist. But to expand the business's reach, Pearl invents a new approach to ambush marketing, recording a music disc with a custom message about cleaning up your shulker monster, and enlisting Tango's help to install it at a few future customers' bases. They manage to get Green and Scar done while they're offline, but Corrales spots them before they can leave a message with him, and the marketing campaign basically becomes an intervention. Dangerous. Disgrace. Look at look at this mess. This is disgusting. Look at this. All right. Stuck to the walls, randomly on mm -hmm. the floors. They're organized. I need you to listen. Oh. Okay. This is not organized. I need you yeah, to okay. listen. I'm... Corrales insists that the educated chaos of his storage is in fact a feature, not an issue, and his record playing machine is back at Spawn Town. Thank you very much. Then again, his judgement may be skewed, given how he spent a lot of time at his mangrove farming machine and hasn't even noticed that he became a man in a grove himself. Mangrovey swamp thing, right? Hey! Frogs! 
How could I forget about frogs? The redecorated tree exploder chamber utilizes mud brick and leaves to great effect, creating an almost quaint interior to a room he might never again visit. And though Corallis might have struggled with the mangrove farm itself, uh, it just clicks. And that's it. Okay, I did not anticipate my, my door going flip-flop. Hypnotize tries his own take on redecorating a farm, even if it means he redecorates the whole bulk of the base in the process. A simple decision to light up the floor around his mob grinder turns into a full recarpeting if the carpet were deep slate and lamps. Good thing it's significantly easier to figure out a square foot coverage of a cylinder when your feet are in fact square. Uh, so yeah, we need to get the floor all the way in over here, and I would like to start building a room to enclose this so it actually looks like something more than just a hollowed out box back there, right? Not as good a thing is the king claiming all the quality farms and businesses in town, or at least Hypno is not that big a fan of it, even if he does complete a few quests on his way. What is the king doing? Is he taking ownership of random builds now? I think we're gonna have to investigate this a little bit more once I get my tools repaired. Completely oblivious to the whole royal drama is Zidaf, for he has gaming to do. We're all Minecraft YouTubers, taming a cat then sleeping in front of it is hardcore gaming, folks. You know, it's the thought that counts, but right now, there's seven different things you could give me. Any single one of them would be fantastic. The custom advancement here is to get every possible present a cat can give to a player, because yes, cats actually do that in Minecraft if you sleep by a tamed cat that isn't sitting. There is even an advancement in the game for it, though really the cat's the one that should get the cup in this case, lugging around countless pieces of rabbit feet. I heard a cat. Did you? Did you meow? Do like a cat scan though, no, a sheep. The hunt doesn't go so well for Zed either, since he first tries to tame the kittens with cooked fish instead of raw ones. Apropos of nothing, Zombie Cleo is also in this video. I've accidentally stumbled upon a little bit of green dye that I kind of don't really need, and I thought maybe you could kind of sell it for me and we could split the profits? Ooh, how much green dye, now that I think about it? Um, say when, uh because I can just keep going. Um, uh, uh, okay. Cleo actually gets to try out an even more niche mechanic. When a creeper is under a potion effect and blows up, it spreads the effect around the blast radius. This is the way Zenaf completes the in-game Furious Cocktail advancement for having every potion effect on you, and also foreshadows nicely what Jevin's roller coaster is going to do to her. Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> We did it! Stress Monster is the definition of planning ahead, starting her Halloween build on the very timely date of September 5th. But with limited time and this many trees to clear, who can blame her? But this is gonna take me like a couple of months to build, so it's gonna take... It's fine! It's fine, we're in no rush, are we? No! Stress plans a massive spooky build on a nearby hilltop in her enchanted forest, and after painfully discovering that you can't craft anything out of Silk Touch Deep Slate... But my... Gold. She time lapses the porch of what will end up being a spooky mansion. The exact plans are still in motion, and while it might end up as a Halloween minigame, it might also be a more permanent home once her storage system has been officially moved in. And at least she'll have plenty of wood for storage chests after all that tree chopping. The tricky bit is picking the right storage system to install. You never know what the internet could come up with. And neither did Tango Tech, but he's done been learned. The design we're going to use today is from a very small YouTuber named Lumi Thief. He has 937 subs, and his design is pretty amazing. It's gonna be fully sortable by categories. It's gonna have a shulker unloader. It's gonna have the works and it's gonna be... The auto sorter Tango scouts out does everything but the dishes and in places through some increasingly shady stuff. Or should we say increasingly wild, given that we're dealing with mud glitches and life hacks. Either way, it's funny he's who Pearl stops by to promote her services. The guy was pretty much building her a robot replacement. What, what do I owe this the pleasure of your visit? I just honestly, I was just popping around to ask if I could borrow your redstone expertise. Oh, uh, always. I'm, I'm very much in need of them. And always. That person Wait. is totally not going to be a victim of it. Oh. Some of the other hermits have to make do with making power tool noises and allowing your brain to fill in the gaps. Joe Hills latest episode drills back into the last few weeks, so it's a great way to catch up if you somehow missed Total Chaos or if you're a completionist for everyone's perspectives. Back at the pinball machine, Joe adds some details and starts measuring out the features he didn't take the time to count out before, meaning it has true-to-life ventilation holes and a more supportive frame. So I realized that just having these pencil marks at the top here wasn't super helpful for actually getting anything done. So then I double-checked my math by rebuilding them on the other side, along with a complementary leaf 
and Froglight Scaffold. Joe can't count on support from the government, however, because Ren has seized his axolotl shop right as Joe got dressed for the occasion. Property of the crone? Anybody? What's a crone? I don't know. We'll sort that out later. So yes, XB Crafted isn't the only person to swap his skin this week, more on that in just a second, but his skin comes from someone in his community, and the reason for that comes from the Royal Quest system. Aiming to get ahead of Azuma at the Arch of Champions, XB picks up a bunch of the quests that are within his power to complete. He sacrifices an enchanted golden apple and a green frog head to the pit, then tracks down and punches Zedaf, although he allows Zed to get a swing in too and splits the diamonds with him. I mean, I, I, I looked at the list, I was like, who who deserves a punch? <laughs> oh, well, see? Very nice. You want to split the profit? We Well, are you recording? Having done his deeds, he returns to the base cave to terraform some of the grounds around his giant train car and plants some mangrove trees amid the pools and lakes. Despite his efforts, Izumavoid remains the top dog of the King Ren leaderboard. No wonder. It turns out he's been completing quests and playing on the server even while on a vacation. And once back, the first thing he does is the quest Cub Fan made, even if the lava room proves a little too top heavy. Even then, Cub confirms that this is a valid speedrun strat. This turns out to not be their final adventure either. With a quality shard on the table, X did not want to miss an opportunity and have an extra Minecrafter when trying to deliver a live warden to the Royal Crassel. It's why when a mysterious invitation to a costume party arrives at his doorstep, he can think of no better costume to wear than the Guardian of the Deep. Am I drunk? <laughs> What? <laughs> What's going on? And finally, there's Impulse, who was the brains behind AzumaCon 2022. Having had all of his shops claimed by the king, sometimes before he's even finished building them, Impulse is still happy to carry out a couple of priority quests, although these are still the Grian based ones, and we suspect one of them is a red herring. Provide a red fish. What do you mean, provide a red fish? That seems easy, right? Maybe one, we'll get one of each just in case. I'm not really sure if they want an alive one in a bucket or wait, can you even pick them up in the bucket or is it just tropical fish? Impulse's keep is now ready for guests to come over. Now he's finished up the ceiling architecture, but having seen the official priority quest to host a royal event or party, Impulse also swings by Grumbot's content generator and gets the prompt Vault Azuma Multiply. Thus the man wearing the dunce hat pulls one of the smartest moves and throws an Azuma themed costume party in Ren's vault. Unfortunately, the warden turned up early and didn't have a costume, so Impulse moves him temporarily. This way, over here. How am I gonna get out of here without making noise? We got no choice. With the festivities in full swing, King Ren crashes the party and Impulse and friends are forced to scatter. But returning to Grumbot for another prompt, Impulse receives some more ominous instructions. Father One wants you to hit generate content. Remove King Claim. The King's Claim to the throne? Which is fine by me, because I'm still not happy about him trying to take over all my shops. And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP, and my name is Pixel Riffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here, and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.